Right, another uh, product uh, quick look video. Um, as you know, if you watch any of my videos uh, over the last few years, I've been using a Sanyo high definition, uh, tiny little camcorder. Uh, it wasn't very expensive, it's one of the exact eye ranges. Can't remember the model number, let's see if it's on the screen. Um, Mm, no, don't know what it is, but uh, it's been okay. But uh, the batteries, uh, the battery life's not very good. The new batteries I've bought have not really helped the situation very much. So I'm, I always have to record with it plugged into the mains, which can be a bit of a pain in the backside sometimes. So I thought about uh, upgrading to a, a better um, HD camera. And then you know what it's like, you look at something and then you think, well, I wonder if I spend a bit more, we'll get something a bit better. And I ended up looking at this Panasonic, it's the, um, <clears throat> it's the HC VX870, it's a 4K uh, camcorder, um, it's got a Leica lens, uh, obviously 4K uh, filming. Uh, it's also got this twin camera ability, it will actually pair up with um, a smartphone and you can embed the smartphone's video that it's taking at the same time as you're filming with this. So you can have two points of view being filmed. You might be filming uh, a landscape and you can use this to film the people that are around you, you know, or whatever you like. I'll probably try and use it uh, to get different views of repairs or whatever it is I'm trying to show uh, people. Um, 20 times optical zoom which is pretty good uh, optical zoom is always more important than digital zoom and if you've got a nice <coughs> high optical zoom with a decent lens that is going to be very useful indeed uh, it's got this level shot function now I've only briefly skimmed through the uh, instruction manual online uh, and what I think this will do is uh, it will attempt to make whatever you're filming level so if you're doing a landscape and you've got the camera slightly tilted instead of on the playback the, uh, the lay of the land is uh, you know at an angle this will try and rotate it slightly whilst filming and, uh, and make it level how accurate uh, that is and what its lim lim limitations are I don't know yet I haven't even opened this uh, yet it has a night mode and uh, the last thing here is yeah in in full HD mode, not 4K mode, uh, it's got a slow motion uh, function on the video. I think a lot of the trick uh, features of this are not going to work in 4K. I don't think they make this very clear uh, in the advertising and on the box and things like that. Although having said that, that does clearly say full HD slow motion. Um, capability. Um, there's a lot of things that aren't going to work with the, uh, the 4K uh, recording. Barcode, uh, just instruct details of this software uh, that I assume it comes with. HD Writer for Windows, uh, iMovie and Final Cut Pro X. And actually I would have thought they were iTunes uh, programs to download. So we'll see what this comes with when we open it. And just on the side, details of, um, oh, actually, and there you go, on the side, works with iMovie and Final Cut Pro X, so maybe there is no software included, maybe just the Windows um, software. Um, so we've got a remote control pan and tilt cradle, an LED light, microphone, wide angle conversion lens, and looks like a an accessory kit which is a bag, extra battery and a, and a battery charger. Surely it comes with a battery charger. Right, well, I don't know, let's uh, pop it open and uh, have a look. I can't believe it doesn't come with a battery charger. <coughs> okay, so we have the filter lens. Sorry, the lens uh, cover, camera, okay I think we'll just go through what we have here then, 
uh, as expected, in fact I wouldn't have been surprised if there were no instructions uh, at all, there is uh, basic operating instructions for some high definition models and some 4K uh, models. More detailed operating instructions are available by re-downloading from the Panasonic website, which I've already done. I've also had access to the service manual for this, just to uh, have a little look. So, yeah, basic instructions included. This is a <coughs> Leica branded lens hood, and uh, you just position this on, and then there's a ring here to lock it into place. It feels quite sturdy but obviously it is all plastic. I expect handling that with some care uh, is going to be required. But nice to have it. We then have a quite short looking USB cable. Well, maybe not as short as I first thought. That's probably not even two foot long, so limited use for that. What else have we got? We have another USB to socket. Okay, so it looks like Oh dear, yeah, you can't charge the battery separately. You have to plug the, the, the camera in. Well, yeah, that sucks. You would like a separate uh, battery dock, I think, really, if you're going to use uh, more than one battery. Yeah, and I've got to say, I think the lead on this charger is even shorter than the one on this Sanyo. I'm just going to lower it down to the floor. Yeah, even shorter cable than the Sanyo's got, and the Sanyo was always a pain because you cannot plug this into a socket or extension lead that's lying on the floor whilst using the camera on a tripod because the cable's not long enough and you end up hanging with this hanging in the air. Um, I'm just going to try that again. I mean, it's just, it's possibly just just long enough, uh, but I'm not convinced. That's disappointing. I would have expected a a battery charger um, to come with uh, with this. This is made in China, like uh, like everything I expect. Disappointing. I think we have a. Oh, okay, this is a, a cold shoe adapter metal uh, this time. I'll have a look how that fits in a minute. Quite a small... Well, that is a tiny battery. Wow, I don't know how long that's going to power it for. Uh, the battery is a VW-VBT190. 3.6 volts, 1940 milliamp hours, 7 watt hours, made in China. Wow, tiny, absolutely tiny battery. And then we have <coughs> another cable, which I'm guessing is for HDMI output. Yes, that looks like uh, HDMI cable. So let's have a little look at the camera. Nice glossy tag, Leica. <clears throat> Actual resolution of the image on there, 3840 by 2160p. All pictures are simulated. <laughs> what? So why tell you the actual resolution if it's all, if it's simulated? <laughs> So we've got capture two scenes at the same time. Uh, yeah, one through the actual camcorder, one through your smartphone, and it's recorded as a no doubt movable box um, on the main display. Yeah, it says full HD only. Yeah, nothing uh, particularly dramatic on that. 
So let's have a look. Oh, it's very, um, very light. It's uh, nice looking unit. Yeah, it's got a slightly rough uh, finish to it, uh, which is uh, just quite nice. It's nicer than the smooth plastic. I'm just going to open the screen up, assume it just pours straight out. Yes, it does. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know where you can see. Where are we going? I don't know whether you can see that, but the screen is actually flush with the surrounding plastic. Now I've used touchscreen cameras and camcorders before and uh, very often there is a raised edge around the screen and if you've got icons you need to press that are up near the edges they can be a bit fiddly to, to press but this is actually flush so any icon that's near the edge you should easily be able to touch with uh, without any issues at all so that's a nice feature yeah we've got the 180 degree rotation which is good and inside here we've got um, yeah, a little USB socket the micro HDMI socket uh, standard, I guess that's composite video, AV output and uh, yeah, strangely we've got a raised sticker on here saying the importer for Europe is Panasonic Marketing Europe uh, Germany. I wonder why they felt the necessity to spoil that by sticking a, a label smack bang in the, uh, in the middle. And then you've got a mic, a mic uh, socket there of course that's going to be um, pretty inconvenient because if you're using any of these connections you're going to have to have the screen open and that's actually spring loaded so if you um, I'm just going to support that with my thumb yeah so if you've got anything in here and you accidentally hit that and get it to spring back that might be um, that might be interesting. <laughs> Hopefully that won't do any damage. I'm just looking where those buttons line up and yeah they're not just on the edge of that plastic. I think they're actually on the screen. So uh, mm, okay interesting. You've got buttons here. This is to switch between uh, record and playback by the looks of it. Just soft touch. They don't really click or anything. Uh, that looks like a levelling icon there, Wi-Fi and then the actual on off button. Again that bear, I mean it doesn't click but you can feel when you've pressed it. And the other ones yeah, barely feel that you've pressed those. They're quite small. Let's see if we can get a bit of a close up there for you. Yeah, and I guess actually this probably shuts down when the screen is closed so if you're not using it um, then you're probably not going to have anything in here anyway hmm but yeah maybe you would have thought some of these would have been you know, underneath rather than sat there looks like there's a small speaker grill here as well now, interesting, we have the shoe adapter release uh, in here as well. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so it plugs in the front. Okay, let's try that. Well, that's pretty unusual as well, surely. You wouldn't have a, okay, it's only a cold shoe, but surely you would have it uh, further towards the front rather than hanging out the back. Okay, and that doesn't actually, when you 
use the shoe release button it doesn't spring out slightly to allow you to press that and then pull you seem to have to use two hands press the thing down and pull it out let's just try that again yeah so that's a two-handed operation cool you'd think that would be uh, under spring tension slightly and then when you press the button it just pops out slightly and then you can remove it with uh, you know, one hand because you want to be holding it with one hand and then just pull it out So now you've got to faff around and use both hands to release that and why would it be at the back? How stupid is that? So what would you use on this? Okay, a, a, a microphone I would uh, expect would be the most common uh, use of it. So you're going to have to make sure whichever mic you buy comes up <laughs> and goes above, uh, above these controls because you've got the uh, button to take a photo there and you've also got the zoom, uh, wide and telephoto zoom button here. Looks like it also controls the volume and uh, uh, zoom in of the images or videos you're playing back. Uh, oh, that's interesting. There is a, a windshield zoom microphone, and this is a 5.1 uh, microphone. So, again, very interesting. So, the other use for this would be a uh, light probably and um, again just seems a bit odd to have it right uh, right at the back because uh, yeah as soon as that comes up and any out you're not going to see these buttons and uh, if it doesn't come up high enough you might not even be able to get your fingers under there oh interesting okay I would have preferred that to uh, release and spring out but obviously decided that wasn't worth the extra money although it's hardly a cheap camera at um, uh, about 600 I think currently no doubt the price of these will plummet as uh, as they become more popular oh, okay that's a screen cover I think How is it oh, okay no it's just the stick on label I'll just pop that off I think there is a protective cover on the screen yeah not sure I'll have a fiddle with that later on anyway, okay so back to this side and um, okay there's a little cover here it says DC in 5 volts oh, okay now that's um, that's a nice little slide if you can get this for you there's a little raised bar here and you can just slide that across and uh, insert the um, charge of uh, the charger and that just clears the little handle whoops sorry um, so yeah that's quite nice it's not going to affect anything if you want to use it without the battery or be charging it at the same time as using it so yeah, okay, that's fine, quite a nice touch there. What the hell is that? Oh, okay, there is another flap that is just slightly spring-loaded either way, and it's for the headphones. Hmm. Quite flimsy. I don't even remember knocking that open, so that's obviously going to be easy to catch on something. And uh, the first thing you're going to do is give that a whack and knock the damn thing off, I would think. So they've gone all <laughs> to the trouble of making a nice slidey door that's protected, goes inside the case. And then they've done this stupid headphone socket that sticks up and out. Stuffed. 
don't see the point of that. Hmm, okay. You can see that being broken pretty easily. So on this end we have, uh, looks like there's a light built in. This is a 49mm uh, lens, so 49mm filters and things will work. We've got f4.08 to, where are we, 81.6mm, um, 1 to 1 1.8, okay. Ah, now here's something else. We've got a small, if you can see that, there is a small dial here. It says camera function and it also says push. Oh, okay, it's just the multifunction dial. So you don't get a close up there for it. Yeah, so you can obviously scroll up and down through functions and then press it in to select whatever it is that you want to uh, select. Just wonder how fiddly that will be. I mean, if you're left handed, you're screwed because there's no way you can reach that anywhere with your left hand. And if you're right handed, you're going to be holding it with a second hand just to support your finger, I think, on that. Hmm. Well, let's uh, I assume the battery is probably flat, but so uh, we'll connect it up anyway. It looks like it places in and then clicks up. Oh, that uh, lens cover has opened automatically. And now we've got uh, a set home region and date time. You're seeing this okay. Thirtieth of the eighth, twenty fifteen. No idea what the time is. Let's have a look on the phone. Fourteen forty three. Hopefully there's a way of turning those stupid chimes off. Yeah, I think that would soon get a bit, uh, a bit tedious. 14.44, so we're okay there. Clock setting is complete. Uh, looks like, a little, oh okay, no SD card, that's fair enough. Yeah, the screen looks very, very clear indeed. I assume, yeah, battery's virtually flat. Looks like we've got four minutes of charge remaining. Or is that four minutes of recording? Is there internal memory? Mm, not sure. Yeah, as soon as I shut that screen, the uh, unit switched off and shut the lens cover, which is, uh, yeah, nice. Nice touch. Yeah, so first impressions are um, yeah favourable, I think. Looks like they made a couple of stupid uh, mistakes. Certainly not impressed with the uh, flip-up cover. I can't see. If I haven't broken that within the first <laughs> month, <laughs> I'll be more than surprised. Fortunately, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, underneath here we have the tripod uh, mount hole and uh, also the SD card that goes under here. Again that's just the little spring loaded cover there. It looks like there's a little light here as well, it says access on it so I'm guessing when the card is being read or written to there is a little uh, flicker of this access light just to warn you not to uh, not to go anywhere near it. Yeah so 
that just turns on automatically. So I was just looking at what that uh, lever is, but it's uh, the battery release lever. And again, the same as before. I, I'm kind of used to if you're pressing a button, then that should you would hope be spring loaded and would move slightly on its own. But yeah, in this case, you have to manually operate the the button and then slide the battery out. I guess the first thing we're going to have to do is get this on uh, on charge. So yeah, look, that's just a, a first look at this uh, Panasonic 4K camcorder. As I said, it's the HC VX870, and uh, yeah, it looks like that might be um, that's interesting. And we've got because uh, I took the battery out, it's uh, it's not shut the cover. Now it has. Okay, so I guess that's something to watch out for. You want that uh, nice Leica lens protected at all times. I've uh, got some neutral density and polarizing uh, filters uh, here. While well, I've got the um, one of the Hoya, uh, it's a polarizing filter, and uh, we've got some others on uh, on order. I tell you what, we'll just have a quick look at this. Hood and just see how easily that is uh, to fit. Yeah, it just seems that you hold it in place and uh, operate that screw here. Sure, again, not, uh, not easy. Okay, you can uh, you can turn it from the top and the bottom. <laughs> well, I'm not doing a very good job there. I think I was. Unlocking it there. Okay, and that's locked in position, and that is just going to help with the uh, the light coming in from the sides, and bouncing all around the lens. So, yeah, again, forty nine mil. So you could buy all sorts of accessories to. Uh, so go on this lens. So yeah, just uh, first looks there guys. Uh, we'll get some test video up and uh, just see what that looks like. And uh, yeah, yeah, keep you updated. Hope that was uh, useful for somebody who is uh, thinking of one of these. Catch you later.